Welcome to the official Monster Hobbies YouTube channel. Today we're looking at the 1994 Chevrolet Impala SS by Ravel Monogram. This is a really cool model car unboxing video that you don't want to miss. So if you enjoy model car building and videos, tips and techs and want to expand your model car knowledge, check out the Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage YouTube channel and I will be telling you more about that at the end of the video. So without further ado, let's go down to the bench and see what's in the box. Now we're going all the way back to 1996 as we check out Ravel Monogram's 1996 Chevrolet Impala SS. On this side of the box, we can see the skill level rating. This is a skill level two kit for ages 10 and up, will require glue and paint. And here we have an upper rear three quarter shot of our back end of our car. There's that Illinois license plate in there. And here we have underneath the hood and you can see all the great detail, including where the decals go. On this side of the box, we can see all the wonderful write-ups for the car. It is eight and nine sixteenths inches long, 66 pieces, body molded in white and has water slide decals. And it says the SS version has always stood for top performance in Chevy cars and the 1994 Chevy Impella SS is no exception. This full-size Chevy was especially modified to perform like a sports car. 94, interesting because this is made in 98 and inside it was talking about the 96. So what year is this thing exactly? Probably a 94. Anyway, there's the paint guide as well and all the rest. So again, really wonderful from Monogram. Printed on the bottom of the box is this wonderful highway with the dual yellow lines and the broken white lines. Again, a wonderful place to display your built model. Now you may think this model kit is a burden in my hand, which maybe it is, because it's got this flip up top. But anyway, here's what we have inside. We've got our instruction sheet. We have our rubber tires. We also have our chrome components. Oh, ha, that's a 57 Chevy bumper in there. It looks like one. Okay, and then, that's really odd. There we've got our car body, and then our glass right here, as well as our interior and all the white components, and there's the red ones in the bag. So I'm gonna clear this out of the way, and then we can join our dog on the street, Danny the dog, as we look over the instruction sheet. Now here's a model car kit that's ahead by a century. No diggity about that. So, without further ado, let's take a look at the instruction sheet for our 1996 Chevrolet Impala SS. Now, right away, the Generation X kids get this wonderful picture of the Impala and a nice write-up in here about how it all went together for GM back in the day. Then we've got our famous read this before you begin right here. There's a lot of languages on this instruction sheet, so that's good. We have uh, the paint chart here with all our colors, and then the symbols we're going to see in this decal sheet, or instruction sheet, as well as the decal applications instructions right down here. I saw that and I accidentally said decal sheet. So let's uh, take a look at our first steps. So again, with the Ravel monogram instruction sheets, we get a lot of pictures, but not too much going on. They could have done this in one image, like the old Johan ones, but whatever. So here we have our right and left hand side engine half with the transmission for step number one. In step number two, we can see the top of the engine being glued on. So this is our cylinder heads and our intake manifold. Then we've got our valve covers up here and our oil pan going on down there. And it does say to paint the oil filter with the engine blue. Here we have panel three and we've got our alternator and the bracket going on here. And then we've got our belt assembly going in there and there, right onto the engine block. Fairly simplistic. Panel four shows our built up engine being dropped into the chassis pan. Panel five shows our exhaust pipe being dropped in onto the chassis. And it says uh, to do that first, I believe. And then we've got our upper control arms and our rear springs being in place and that goes in second now i th i think that's referring to that or maybe the first is this crossbar and second is the springs it's not really too clear is it now panel six shows our rear axle with the differential and these radius rods as well as our drive shafts and then you just glue on these shock absorbers onto the back and then drop the whole thing into your chassis panel seven shows our two-piece radiator so there's our radiator right there and then in the back, we've got these wonderful fans gluing on. 
Panel 8 shows these front suspension dropping in on the chassis. Now remember these are pins that lock the wheels on, so make sure that all the seam lines are perfectly cleared off there, otherwise your wheels won't spin on the axles. Now panel 9 shows our wheels going together. These are three piece, so you get the outer wheel, you get the directional tires and the inner wheel. You make those up four times, one for each corner of the car, and then you click them onto your axle ends. Now like I was saying before, these click on once, they do not come off the other way. So make sure that that is nice and clean from seam lines so your wheels will turn and not lock up. So here we have panel 10 and this is our interior tub. It also has the inner fenders in here and it says to add on all these decals in here. But there's a note, it says decals not compatible with setting solutions or solvents. So be careful there that you don't put that on and then put on some uh, solve a set and all of a sudden these things are all chewed up and gone. Now here we have panel 11 showing the front seats and seat backs being put together and then those drop into that interior. Now I think Monogram Ravel made a little mistake here. Panel 12 is really supposed to be panel 11 and panel 11 that I just showed is supposed to be panel 12 because look at here you get these separate molded interior panels and it says to paint them all this way and whatever and then drop them in and make sure that the little peg goes into the bucket bottom hole and that. But take a look here. Trevor, you can just move this back because I can't do it with paws because I have no thumbs. Anyway, eh. see, and then look in panel 11, the sides are already in. And then you put the seats in. So monograms messed that one up. But anyway, so do panel 12 before you do panel 11. Now here we have panel 13 and we've got the firewall going in place with our master cylinder being glued on. That drops into these slots here. And then we've got our dashboard which goes in a little bit back here into those interior panels. And that includes our steering wheel and our column and all these decals. Now they're really, really cool. You also get a radio in here, possibly a CD player, but definitely a tape deck anyway. And uh, on there, you can always listen to uh, songs like How Bizarre by OMC, Ahead by a Century by The Tragedy League Hip, Bulls on Parade by Rage Against the Machine, Burden in My Hand by Soundgarden, Stink Fist by Tool, or No Diggity by Blackstreet. That's one of my favorites of all time. I like your style, No Diggity. Gotta turn it up. Okay, there's the dashboard. That drops into place there. Uh, very simplistic. Like, why didn't they just include this in the previous illustration? I'll never know. Now, here we have our windows being dropped into the body, and it says to paint the body inside gloss black and light ghost gray inside, so that would be the upholstery color. Same with up in the roof in the shaded area. And uh, there's the rear window going in place. You have to paint the gloss black inside here for the rubber. And we also have the side windows. This is painted silver there and then all that hooks in up front. They've got it painted satin black here under the front windshield, and that's just like the real car. And speaking of our front windshield, there it is, and with our rear view mirror being glued in place, and then that goes up in and clicks on these little pins there just to hold it in the right position. Panel 17 is showing our interior being dropped onto the chassis. So again, very simple. And here we have the chassis and interior being dropped into the body shell. The panel 19 shows our front headlight bezels as well as the turn signal lenses being glued into place in the front and it has some paint callouts for turn signal amber and whatnot. Then in the back we have a spoiler up here as well as our turn signals in red and then you've got your license plates. So you got one for the rear which has the, the little sticker on there and the one for the front that does not. Panel 20 shows the air cleaner going together. It's a two-piece unit. And then here we've got our condenser for our air conditioner. So all that will hook in under the engine bay on top of that engine block. And then here we've got our chrome mirrors and the mirror housings all going in place on left and right. And in panel 22, we have the front grille being glued on the underneath of the hood. And then that drops in position here. So I hope you enjoyed the instructions and I will be taking a look at the decals in a little while.
Thank you very much, Danny, for showing us those instructions. So what we have here now is the body of our Impala. And as you can see, it is quite highly detailed. You get the nice vent in here underneath, as well as our windshield wipers. Again, a really cool looking kit. The front bumper is nicely molded. There are some seam lines under here, which you'll have to clean up. And over here, you get the nice four doors. So you could build this as a police cruiser if you want. And actually, I remember back in the day when the RCMP in North Vancouver finally got a brand new Impala. And I always remember the, uh, the sound it made. So they still had a lot of those like late 80s cars at the time. And this was their first one of these. So when <laughs> I, I was standing on the corner one day and there was like a police chase going on and you could hear the new car or the old car. And it, it followed this uh, one guy's car and it went as it went down the street. And then this was right behind it and it went. <laughs> so just the aerodynamic shape on these things uh, against the earlier 80s police cars pushing all that wind was quite the difference. So anyway, I never knew if they found that guy or not or caught the guy, but hopefully. So there's that Impala logo in there, again, nicely detailed. I know it's a little hard to see with the white plastic. So turning this over, not really anything in mold marks. So again, really nicely done by Ravel Monogram. What we come to expect. After looking at the body, let's check out our chassis. And here it is on the parts tree. You can see a lot of flash. Ah, dun dun dun, dun dun dun, dun dun dun, dun dun dun, dun. flash. All right, there's the air cleaner. We also have our exhaust pipe here with the catalytic converter, the muffler one and the muffler two. And then there's our radiator and our side mirrors. So let's bring this up to the camera. And again, you can see just how wonderful this is. Look at that fuel cell. It looks just like the fuel cell on the real car. Not that I've ever climbed underneath this thing to look at the fuel cell specifically, but there it is in all its wonderful glory. Look at that nice cross brace in there. That's pretty nice. Nicey nice. Look at the detail on the radiator. You get that cross brace in here as well as a little tiny, I don't know, that's a little, what, what would that be? Would that be the heater? Radiator for the heater or something bizarre? If you guys know, if you own one of these Impalas, let us know what that little teeny one is down there. So there's our air cleaner. And turning us up on this side, you can see the little pins for the fan. and. The radiator detail is also molded on the back, so that's really nice. Looks good. It looks good to me. There's all the Ravel markings, the name and everything for Ravel monogram. But overall, again, really excellent work. Minus the flash! Ah! Next up we have our interior tub, and there it is. Also has the under details of the hood including a battery and all the little like windshield washer bottles and whatever you find under the hood usually. Maybe that's a battery. That looks like a fuse box thing. I am unfamiliar with the car. Anyway, there's our interior. So you get the pedals for the automatic and uh, the gas pedal, of course. And oh, gas and brake, no clutch. <laughs> that's what I'm trying to say. There's our seats in the back here. Again, the upholstery is nice. You get the little Impala emblem up in between the seats. And there we've got our dashboard. So again, really wonderful work here. The dashboard is in two pieces, probably because this was too, uh, too deep in here to mold as one piece. But that gives you the opportunity to get in with the paintbrush here really nicely or use those decals. Just remember not to use the Solva set, according to Ravel Monogram. And there's our uh, alternator with the bracket sitting there, as well as a cross brace for underneath and our front buckets. Again, on the back, there's a couple of mold marks, but uh, they're on the bottom. So you will have to remove them just for things to clear and fit together properly. But overall, I mean, really, really excellent work. The dashboard also has the airbag up top, which was basically new for back in the 90s. So again, really, really wonderful work. On this parts tree, we have those wonderful interior panels left and right. And these look really plushy and padded. So again, capture the look of the car excellently. And here we also have another exhaust system. So again, that's kind of strange. There's our rear spoiler and the crossover for our uh, intake. That would be under the air cleaner. 
There's our firewall, our steering wheel, the wheel backs, the dual fans for our radiator, as well as column shifter and our belts and pulleys. Now, I do believe there is a model like made by Boyd or something that is a dual exhaust sort of deal. So maybe this is the left and right hand side of that. Again, look at how nice that detail is inside those interior panels. I mean, that's excellent. How many of you have built this kit? Let us know in the comment section down below just how well it goes together. Also, give a shout out to Danny the dog. <laughs> okay, there's our, our intake again. So let's turn this over. See those wheel backs? They go in really deep. Again, no mold marks really to be concerned with, but uh, really excellent work. Actually, considering that this is such a simple kit, the fact that there's no mold marks sitting out on the front of these parts is really excellent. Here we have our parts tree showing the front and rear axles, the front and the rear, as well as the springs and our shock absorbers. There's the oil pan underneath, as well as the transmission pan. So again, this is sort of a unique type of way to make a motor. There's our engine blocks left and right, and transmissions left and right, and the top of the cylinder head. This almost makes me think of that, uh, what was it, the 78 Firebird or 80 Firebird? Kind of from the from Monogram. Same sort of way to build up a, the engine and the suspension. There's our seat backs and our valve covers here, as well as the hood. So now how does it go on the flip test? Well, there are mold marks right up in here under the hood. But again, you can easily take those out. It's not a problem. Uh, oh, there is a bit of a mat in here. This has got the little pins in underneath. And then, yeah, so this is basically a snap together in a lot of ways. So I can see now why they made it like this. But overall, I mean, for what it is, it's excellent. Next up, we have our chrome components. And I figured out where this 57 Chevy bumper came from. It's a customized station wagon. And we can take a look at that box art right now. There, you see what I mean? There's that funny bumper. So here we have our chrome wheels and the front grille, which get a good black wash in there and a little golden Chevy emblem, as well as a couple of strips that go along the sides, I believe, somewhere. I don't know. Anyway, uh, and then we've got our headlight bezels and our uh, air conditioning thingy. All right, anyway, check out that grille. That's again, really nice. There's a couple little holes in there to click up underneath the hood. And again, the wheels are great. They got that SS emblem right in the middle and our 1990 style five spoke mags on the back. Nothing to be too concerned with. Couple of mold marks in there. Again, scrape them out, paint that black. No one will ever know that that was there. So again, really great chrome work by Ravel. Here we have our glass components. And again, we've got the wonderful defroster molded in into the rear window. And we've also got our rear side windows molded in and the inner dome light. So remember that this area here is going to be painted a flat gray just to look like uh, uh, upholstery material. And then here we've got our turn signal covers and our rear tail lamps as well. And this little one right there and our front windshield. So again, really excellent work. There is again flesh, ah, but you can see the nice ribs into there wonderful stuff and then look at the uh, texture on our inner lights again really well done by monogram now there's a little bit of scratching in here on that top there but that's okay because it'll be glued up into the body just as long as nothing is on the window which unfortunately it is because <laughs> this was never in a bag there we've got the sun visors and we've got this ridge around here on the window frame that you need to paint with your gloss black but this being a snap together, it will pop in place in those two little holes. So again, really wonderful work by Ravel Monogram. Now, if you're feeling a little tired, here's some wonderful Goodyear Eagle directional tires that are in this kit. Again, these are on a parts tree, so you're gonna have to clip them off here and here, and then use your wheel spinning tool in your drill and a block of sandpaper, and that will remove this uh, ridge right up the center. Now these are directional, but the one thing about it is that all the writing is on one side only. It's not like the AMTs where they're headed on both sides to be authentic. And then you really got to watch which way the arrows go. These ones just have the writing to the outside. So I do believe one, one is thicker than the other. Or, no, 
no, they're the same thickness. So again, really nicely done. And on the parts tree makes it so that you don't lose one. And here we have our decal sheet. And these three nice ones make up the dashboard as well as D, that looks like a vent actually. And then these are all underneath the hood. So again, really cool. Maybe D's under the hood too. And then you get your Illinois XC2377 license plates. And this one has a registration sticker. So again, really nice uh, detail in here. I and mean, look at how good that gauge is right in there. That's on our radio. Again, really, really awesome stuff. Thank you so much for sticking with us to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed my review of the 1994 Chevrolet Impala SS by Ravel Monogram. So what is the Monster Hobbies model car garage? Well, that is our uh, second sister YouTube channel in which that you can learn everything about model car tips and techs, as well as show and tells of both my model car collection and my father's. And you also get great videos where I build model cars and help you in order to build them as well, so that you know the steps in order to put these things together. So if that's your cup of tea, <laughs> check out this video right here that tells you all about it. And if you just wanna go directly to that YouTube channel, click down here and it'll take you there. So until next time, everybody, enjoy your models, happy model building, and we'll see you in the next video.